So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at Enemy Action Arden from Compass Games. This game has been around for I think four, maybe five years. Um, it's a bulge game. It is designed by John Butterfield, and that might be an indication. This is a uh, primarily solitaire game. So <clears throat> it's in a big three-inch box. And what's the date on it? It is 2015, so it's about five years old. Um, this has been one that's been on my kind of radar, on my wish list for a while, um, but just haven't been able to get a hold of it. Um, it's not the cheapest game in the whole world. If you buy it new, it's over $100, um, but it's got multiple maps, a uh, bunch of counter sheets, deck of cards, and it is made in the USA. So, you, you know, if you want to support <laughs> US manufacturing, and, you know, that that's why it's as, as expensive as it is. Um, it is a big war game. You do get a lot in it, uh, but it's also made in the US. So, let's crack it open. I do love the artwork on the front. Uh, it's everything bold, right? You've got the winter... You've got the armor on the ground, but it's smoking because there's no fog, and you've got the allied air superiority. So, just a, a nice picture there. I like that. Okay, so there's a couple of different command decks in here. There's a German command deck, and I presume an allied one as well. Uh, the game's played with a D10. And then we have on here... Uh-oh. Let's cover that up. Uh, so this is an envelope from Compass Games. And so I got this game secondhand as part of a trade. Um, but what you'll see here is this is a replacement counter sheet. Um, one of the original counter sheets was basically misaligned and misprinted. So Compass issued um, a replacement. I think if you buy the game now, it's got it already in it. Um, but this was from before then, and they were just they just sent them out to everyone who bought one uh, through the mail. Yeah, right. 2015, 2016, Compass Games Manual. They've come up with so many games since then. I got two of those. Cool. Toss those. That's just advertising. Okay. So we have a play aid. So we have the card references, which has a breakdown of all the different symbols, numbers, and bits and pieces on the cards. On the back we have our terrain effects chart, um, combat strengths, dispersed units, strategic movement, all that kind of stuff as well. So this is one, I wonder if we've got another one of those in here. Let's see, we have German setup card organizer. Oh, and on the back we have the allied command card display. What that indicates is that we will not be doing... we can do either of those. So, uh, German unit adjustment display. So I think if you're either playing with the Germans, you play with all the German stuff. Maybe not, because then you've got German and Allied command card displays. These look similar enough, just for the different factions. This is for two-player, okay. So there's a, there's a two-player version, so both players don't have one of those. Then there's the Allied solo version and the German solo version. So, interesting. Okay. German system, events, and tactics. Combat procedures, Allied player, events, and tactics. Okay. So in the middle, I think we've got, for the Allied solo, German attack, allied attack, drawing combat chits, combat chits summary. This is a lot of information on these plates. And on the back here we have, if you're doing enemy action, I'm doing allied solo. You have the allied, this is what allied events do, and then what the German events do, and their tactics, and basically what they're going to do. As opposed to, gosh, there's a lot here, isn't there? Okay, as a okay, this is the two-player version. If you're playing it two-player, this is what your allied events and tactics do, and this is all of the rules and summaries. If you're playing as the German solo, this is what your events and tactics do, 
and all of the combat procedures there. And this is more of... So this is German in system intelligence. I think the Germans, I don't know if when you're the playing the allies as the AI, maybe it's a bit easier because they're more defensive and you have to be the aggressor. But here, if, if this is the solo, the, the German system intelligence. Hmm. I don't know exactly how the system works, but there's a lot of play, it's a lot of information on there. But again, there's, you know, basically three different variants in this box. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we have Allied Solo Rules, German Solo Rules, and the, the two-player rules. And these are all tones. So let's look at the, two, the two-player rules. It's actually the smallest rules, which kind of makes sense, I guess, because you're going to, you know, you rely less on systems as you just, here's the rules to play them. But the rules themselves look to be well organized. The font's actually fairly large and it's two column instead of three, so lots of pictures and diagrams. So not that's actually not in, in, that intense an amount of rules, even though because these are all markers and setups and scenarios in the back. Really the rule it, it's a forty two page rule book, but this is no different actual content wise than most other rule books. So <laughs> The solo for the Germans, however, is now up to, you know, not including the scenario, 60 pages of rules. <laughs> so you got an extra 20 pages here. But again, you can take this bite size in the sense that you just pick one of these. Oh, I'm going to do the German solo. Great. So you just learn this whole system. And then once you're done with that, you probably have a decent idea of some of the functionality, and then you've got a whole other subset of rules. You've got a, basically a second game in the box. This is what it's touted as. But yeah, this this one has fewer rules. This one has... no, just kidding. It's 60 pages of rules. <laughs> 63. Yeah, this one's got more. So there's a lot There's a lot of rules, a lot of reading to be done here. But it's a Butterfield design, and I will always, always, always give his designs a go. So, now we've got some counter sheets in here. This is the one that was replaced. If you can kind of see here, we'll hold this up. You can see where the cuts are made. The uh, the artwork is misaligned. And it was replaced with this sheet, where you can see everything is very well aligned. Just how it should be. So nothing to worry about there. This one, frankly, I'll probably just toss it. There's no reason to keep it. Okay, but the units themselves, this, I don't know why, but I, I think I like this in, in a game. So you have the infantry units use a NATO symbol, and the armor units have the various tank compositions on there as well. So we have some allied units there, and then these other units down here, we have German units. And these are, this is a white core, and they're kind of falling out. Partly that's due to the transit, um because they, they seem to be in there decently well enough. On the reverse side, it looks like we have some either transit or reduced sides on here. I'm gonna put those down before those all fall out. And then this second sheet of counters is a ton of different admin markers. Looks like we have some control markers of various different forms, ammunition markers, well, su supply markers, let's call it what it is. Looks like we have some, whoa, oh, he drops it. We have some other units down here as well. And those are very clean, crisp counters. And on the back is all the uh, allied versions of those. You can see they've got a green background versus a gray, but it's those supply markers, control markers, all that kind of stuff as well. And the last one here is more markers. And I think these are the, uh, these markers, I think these are those combat chits. I was talking about drawing combat chits, and that's how combat uh, has, has an effect, at least, whether it's resolution. Yeah, so it says here on the back. Whoa, I'm dropping these. So we've got combat chit set one and set two. You can see that on the edge there. And then some more of these admin markers, both allied and German sides. And then the last thing in the box are the maps. And it is three different maps. So you get a map for, I 
Ooh, I think it's a map for each version. German, allied, and two-player. But I am not 100% positive, so let's find out. Uh, Alright, we'll start with one of these. So, this one. Okay, yes. I believe that is the case. Alright, so 22 by 34 map. And you can see all the way at the top here, Allied Solo Game Map. And I believe that there's just there's a bunch of different arrows on here. I don't know if those are fields of fire or directions. Yeah, it looks like we got primary forward arrow, hold value, and a secondary forward arrow. So if you're here and you're told to move forward, you would follow this big arrow, if it's a primary, along the road. If it's a secondary, you'd go over here, I guess. So this is the map. We got Bastogne. Oh, so I'm looking at it upside down. Okay, great. Yes. So we got uh, west side over here, so we can have allies. Germans over here, so the it looks like we have our big defensive line. So we're probably going to push out this way as the Germans, and then this is allied solo game, which I presume means you play as the allies, and the Germans are going to just roll up and. Yeah, and I say that because the arrows are pointing this way generally. So Germans are going to probably roll up this way, and the Allies will then have to counterattack, push them back. So that's this map. Let's crack open the next one. You'll note these are very, very similar. The biggest difference is we've got different hold values and all the directional markers. So this is the German solo game. This one's a bit more involved it looks like. It's a quite busy map with all the different blue and black triangles with all the yellow numbers on it. So the uh, the yellow, uh, all these allied positions, uh, they have uh, the, the black arrows are the forward arrows if they're given a forward, but because it's allies falling back you then have these blue withdraw arrows. It's how they're going to do their retreats. So it does look a little bit busier for that reason. But again, you've got all these different holding boxes on the sides for different uh, units and cards. you got a nice turn track over here, which is full of descriptors of special events and things to remember. And then the final map is the much, much cleaner <laughs> two-player game. Let's get this the right way around. So the two-player game has none of those arrows because we're relying on the players to make all the decisions. You just have all the different terrain types, the massive overlay of all the different roads, and then you've got the, the very clear victory points of, of the different uh, villages and towns, basically. And it looks like, because we don't have place for all of those cards as such, we have the, there's a different configuration of the of the uh, turn track and the holding boxes, but everything else seems to be in a very similar place and position. The game uses a D10 and it comes with one. I will need more of those, but I have plenty of those spare. And then the last thing, oh, he says, oh, this is a lot. These cards are nuts. Is this big old deck of cards? So this should, be, we should have a German command deck and an allied command deck, and that is exactly what we have. Let's see, what do we have here as well? Ah, okay, so German command deck, German setup, allied command deck, allied action. Okay, again, there's rules for all of these, so I'm not quite sure. Our command decks, I think of the AI though. So this, for example, says first SS Panzer Corps, they're going to deploy all reserves, activate all units in core, assign two RPs to core, 20-29, and activate any one unit. So not, And it looks like it's along primary. I would imagine that has, with reference to those primary uh, forward directions. But there's a bunch of these, all the different formations will activate according to these. The German setup, there's a bunch of these. I'm not sure if these are just options. Okay. If So, for example, 
the different cores, Panzer cores have a number of different colored coded cards. So for these purple ones, there's hey, let's show this. This card has an A, card B, and card C. I don't know if the scenarios dictate which ones or if you can randomly choose those. And as you would do, so you've got blue, orange, a nice bunch of pastel colors for all the different formations. So your setup's never going to be the same, I would imagine. So that's pretty nice for replay value as well. Uh, the allied command cards. So we got US First Army. Oh, these are. U.S. Army, U.S. Third Army, British Army, U.S. Army, more U.S. Army. So, again, it's the same thing where this gives you the uh, the directions. This is what they're going to do. Or they're going to do this thing. And there's a priorities about what they will and won't do. The Allied Action, these are different. So I'm not quite sure what they're going to do with these situation units, stack, strength is greater than approximately not. Okay. I am unclear about what these do, but these are a bunch of different varied actions that they can or can't do based on a situation. Then they do either this or this, depending on what's going on. So though that's interesting, but I'm not quite sure how those function. But that's basically everything that's in the game. Uh, you get three counter sheets, three maps, a bunch of cards. And again, the units look great. I enjoy the look of these. Now, I've seen a lot of people use a lot of different cubes and markers on BGG, so I'm going to look into that to make the admin a bit easier, but it's a budget field game, and it's designed as a solitaire game, so I'm excited to get my teeth into this to see just how it is, because I think people who do play it have enjoyed it. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Enemy Action Arden from Compass Games, and I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.